Okay, I'm over at the mill. This project right here is a small copper bus bar piece. It's silver coated. This is a half inch wide by I'm not I don't remember how thick it is right now, it doesn't really matter. Um by 100, 130 thousandths thick by half an inch wide. I have a gauge pin in here. This is a .081 in the hole. I've measured from the top to the top of the pin and calculated from the center of the hole to the top here I'm 159 thousandths. I want that to be 100 thousandths. So um, this is a 31 thousandths blade uh, cutoff saw. I'm going to touch off on the top, then, then uh, bring it down uh, 59 thousandths. And I'm going to just cut a little bit off the top here. I could use the end mill, but I got, I got to cut a bunch of little pieces off of here. So I'm just going to make a cut off the top of that. And then we'll move it down. So that the first piece is 200 thousandths thick. And then uh, we'll, might have to do a second cut because uh, of the spread on these things. Uh, I think it was originally set up for about 50 something thousand saw. So we have to, might have to do extra cuts, but it's copper, it cuts pretty, pretty easily. And we're gonna end up with a bunch of little bars. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to touch off and then move down, or move the table up, I should say, but 59 thousandths. Resetting the dial. Okay, it looks pretty good. I pull my pin. Do this all in one cut. Pretty thin. So, so we're going to move it up. I want the piece to be 200,000 thick. Yeah, 200,000 thick with the holes. So the holes are in the middle. So this is 31. So I got to come uh, up 231 thousandths. We'll just do it with the table. Oh. 
100, 200, 31. Okay, let's see how she comes out. Very nice. Come out good. Looks pretty even. Now only about I don't know, 20, 30 of these to go. Something like that. Quite a few. Okay. This one's uh, been cut off. And then a quick little uh, bevel, or I should say just deburring the edges. Uh, the end of the tube and the, the little bars on the scotch Bright wheel. We're ready to uh, set the needle in here. So now when I put that needle in, it doesn't go in all the way. And then just, uh, I'm going to tap it down in there. And it's going to be nice and tight and expand that little tubing a little bit. And mix it nice and tight. I do that over the vise here. Be right back. Okay, there we go. Fits in there just beautiful. And that one's going to go right there. Just like that. And we pull out all the cord basically. Kind of retain it here so it doesn't retract in. Grab my scissors which are now gone. Cut the end off. This stuff frays real easy, so I put a little drop of super glue on the end. So the needle part gets strung on loose. And I tie a special little knot. Called a loop knot. I also tie my flies on the same way. Extremely good knot. This, since I started using this knot, I don't think I've ever lost a fish because of a knot failure. This knot is the strongest knot I swear out there for tying on a fly. Plus, it's loose. It doesn't, uh, it allows the fly to move around freely. And I think that in, has improved actually catch rates. Got that excess off. Another drop of super glue on there just so it doesn't fray too much. Undo this. There we go. Another tool. Nice and easy to carry with you. Nice and lightweight. Stick in your pocket. 
you won't have to get stabbed and uh, I can't think of much else to show you on that but that's about it pretty simple I think everybody will like one of these pretty fun anyway I only have about 15 more to go <laughs> I've already got six or so, eight five, four five six seven I think that's this was the ninth one I'll probably do another 12 or 15 more so thank you for uh, watching there and uh, there's a new fishing tool for you pretty cheap air attack